Welcome back, March the 11th, Brady G. This is another episode of this new series we've been doing on the show called Unlocking the Spiritual Tools of Yeshua. Now, I'm looking at our last episode, the prayer shawl, or the talit, and why Christians should use it. That was a great episode about uh, using something that God so graciously gifts us, and, and God is so, so generous with his blessings. Anybody would know that. However, he does have a lot of tools that we can use to conquer Satan and conquer, even conquer the globalists, as we so often talk about on this channel. He's been so gracious with these things. We have the spirit of truth. We have the, the you know, boots of peace. We have all sorts of different things we're going to talk about in this series, and we can't wait to talk about them with you. However, today we're going to talk about something that occurs in scripture and something that is very central to the Jewish faith, especially around, you know, Yom Kippur or other Jewish holidays in the fall, and that would be the shofar. And the shofar is the ram's horn. And uh, the first time we actually hear about the shofar in scripture referenced as actually the shofar, that would be in Exodus 19:16. And that is when the Torah was first given to Israel in the Pentecost. On the morning of the third day, there were thunders and lightnings and a thick cloud on the mountain and a very loud shofar blast. Now, I'm not going to embarrass myself on the show here and try to blow this because I've not been, been graced with the gift to play the shofar, but I could probably learn it. But... <laughs> That's the best I can do. There is a little trick to it. If you gave it a try, you could play it. However, this can be so powerful for your Christian walk. Now, I'm going to actually bring this up to the camera because I want you to see this. I know you can't hear me now, but it's just a very nice, sleek design of a ram's horn. I hope you can see that. And the reason I really want you to see it is because this is a pure representation of the blood of Yahweh and all of his provision for us. It's used during worship at the temple or the tabernacle, and it's used during worship here at the Happy Tabernacle, because we actually do worship ministries right here, singing glorious songs to Yeshua and Yahweh, which we're always happy to do. So, before you ever use the shofar, first you buy one of these from Israel, you order it, it comes in the mail, you're so excited, you learn to play it. Before you play it, we want to give you a blessing you can use to sanctify the use of the shofar and allow its power to flow through you gracefully and blissfully. And that blessing, I'm not going to embarrass myself by trying to read it in the original Hebrew, uh, but I wish I could. But it would go something along the lines, I'll put it up on the screen here if possible. Blessed art thou, Lord our God, Master of the universe, who sanctifies us with his commandments and commands us to hear the sound of the shofar. And, of course, replace shofar with talit if you want to uh, use your prayer shawl at the same time. When you combine one, more than one of these spiritual tools of Yeshua, you achieve a power that is so great that you're enlightened to the truth of Jesus and the truth of God and you know his direction for you in your life. You finally understand that this is not some weak hippie religion as some would have it hippie jesus is constantly advertised in the media we constantly see oh love everybody god's never mad he always loves you that is true he always loves you however he was mad enough to kill entire cities at once wipe out the entire species on the planet except for one family the hippies don't tell you that. And we have a big issue with the hippies rising here on Happy Tabernacle as well. But what can you do about that? So after you've, you know, blessed the use of the shofar, the talit, there's an order of uh, different blasts you would do through this. And again, I'm not going to do it because I'm not very good at playing it. 
I used to play the clarinet in high school, but whatever. The first one is tekia, which is a long single blast. This would be something you would have heard in ancient times when you were the the king was calling for some sort of a meeting or the, a coronation or something like that. You would hear one long blast. The second one would be the shavarim, which will be three short whale-like blasts, and this signifies repentance, or you had your back turned to God and your head towards sin, and you decide to turn your back to sin and your head towards God. That is how we define repentance here at Happy Tabernacle, and we've been working with a group of individuals to teach them that. We have Tehua, which is nine staccato blasts of alarm. This awakens the soul, and this opens up your soul to the divine loving power of Yahweh, which is so ever-flowing and so beautiful that it empowers you to fight the evil that we currently face in the world and accept it with a grain of salt knowing that soon you'll hear the shofar coming when Yeshua returns and takes his believers with him to the kingdom and we begin the tribulation and what's known as the rapture. However, it's not the first rapture, it's another rapture because we've seen lots of people in the scriptures, even in the Torah, raptured. So, if you want to know more about the rapture, I have a video called, uh, well, the rapture is real, I think I called it. So I would give that a watch if you want to learn more about Yeshua returning and the last type of blast you might hear and you will hear other random series of blasts during worship or corporate worship time however these are the four primary types the last one would be Tekya Agdal which would be a great long blast for as long as you can blow and this means a couple different things to different people but to us we would use this blast to show just the sheer power and the sheer beauty of the love of God and just how special and how important he is to us. We would blow it as long as we can. And um, it's just a real signal of joy, a real signal of God's love and God's sacrifice. We hear the, the when you think about the shofar, one of the things you think about would be, you know, the ram stuck in the brush with Abraham in Genesis. Uh, that's the first time you really hear about a ram's horn, and here now we have it later on used as a tool to glorify God. What does that tell you? Is that there's something significant about the ram horn? And of course, this is a nice tool that you should incorporate into your walk with God. So, so far we have the talit and the shofar, and there's so many more tools where that comes. We have like anointing oil, we have you know, holy water, we have the spirit, uh, the sword of the spirit. We have all, so much interesting stuff we can't wait to get to. We can't wait to continue this series that will enlighten you and will empower you by the power of Yahweh right here on Happy Tabernacle. We'll be right back. Dance to the rhythm of the music. Don't care what the DJ chooses. Get lost in the rhythm of me. The internet has made information readily available to anyone, but reliable, trustworthy facts are still hard to come by. Happy Tabernacle is a cutting-edge ministry dedicated to expressing the truth and exposing the evil. No matter the cost, no matter the consequences, we will risk it all. You can help support this initiative by subscribing to the YouTube channel today and keeping our leaders in prayer. 1 Peter 5.8 be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary is the devil, as a roaring lion walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. Mm.